এখন একটু তন্ময় বিশ্বাস টুডে উই শ্যাল লার্ন অ্যাবাউট হোয়াই নাইট্রোজেন ইজ সো মাচ আনরিয়াক্টিভ ওকে হোয়াট ইজ দ্য অ্যাডভান্টেজ অ্যান্ড ডিসঅ্যাডভান্টেজ অফ দিস লেসার রিয়াক্টিভিটি লেট স্টার্ট সো হোয়াই নাইট্রোজেন ইজ আনরিয়াক্টিভ দ্য এক্সপ্লেনেশন ইজ দ্যাজ ইজ নাইট্রোজেন মলিকিউল উইচ ইজ কনসিডার অ্যাট ইস এন টু হ্যাজ এ নাইট্রোজেন নাইট্রোজেন ট্রিপল বন্ডস সি দে আর থ্রি বন্ডস ওয়ান সিগমা টু পাই বন্ডস অ্যান্ড বিকজ অফ দ্যাট দিস ইন ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু activate this nitrogen into something x then you need to provide a huge amount of energy needed to break this bond okay so this is one and another thing is the homonuclear diatomic molecule n2 so it's non polar consequently first of all bond energy is higher second is non polar so very less reactive so that's why it's very difficult to activate nitrogen and proof of the statement is means so is difficult to activate so consequently what i mean if when you means what advantage we get when you react this carboxylic acid with diazomethane it produce it protonates the diazomethane why because diazomethane has one canonical form that is ch2 minus n triple bond n plus so from this you can say why how diazomethane can act as a base so this negative charge helps to abstract the proton from this polar oh group okay so this diazomethane molecule act as a base and abstract this and produces this carboxylate anion and ch3 n2 plus now look at this molecule a little carefully so this negative charge on this diazomethane is quenched fine next step see but this methyl group is attached to n2 plus means this nitrogen nitrogen triple bond having plus so if this bond taken by this nitrogen it will be a neutral molecule it's a gas so it will come outside so that's why what it does see this carboxylate anion attacks this methyl via sn2 fashion and this n2 leaves and produces methyl ester so this is a ester production specifically is a methyl ester production under mild reduction condition means the solvent is ether no water needed no acid base those esterification doesn't needed so in this case what is why this happens first of all methyl is very less bulky so nucleophilic attack on this methyl group is possible second night the second and the most important this n2 is the one of the best living group in this world because this triple bond high state energy means stable molecule gas it coming out from the reaction medium such that equilibrium could be shifted for um, right side efficiently okay but remember one thing since this is a very good uh, living group this diazomethane molecule so it is very difficult to store diazomethane you need to store it in a freeze if you heat this it may undergo explosion so that is a in problem of this thing also but remember another advantage is also there since nitrogen is less reactive so our atmosphere has 75 percent nitrogen gas so if this nitrogen gas doesn't exist or some somehow by some xyz reason if this nitrogen gas vanishes then everything will be oxygen so our lungs will be destroyed the organic material will burn out so lots of problem will be started so mother nature have created a sustainable balance by this less reactivity of nitrogen and what is the disadvantage of this process so you know the haber bloss process which produces this ammonia molecule from nitrogen and hydrogen so in this case if you look at little closely this 500 degree centigrade 100 bar this is a very very dusty condition why needed because in order to break that nitrogen nitrogen triple bond you need to supply huge amount of catalyst huge amount of energy although there is one catalyst fe2o3 okay so this is the thing and this ammonia molecule is utilized for the preparation of urea you can say this urea preparation this urea is the most widely used synthetic chemical fertilizer okay the maximum used fertilizer for this uh, our cultivation and our 50 percent of population exist because of this urea synthetic urea better to say now not only that these uh, ammonia is used to prepare another interesting fuel that is hydrazine n2h4 i guess you have learned many things about its chemical reactivity nucleophilic addition those are fine like chemical or laboratory use but it's a potential fuel in future so how this hydrazine is produced if you look at this this ammonia molecule is first oxidized to hydrogen peroxide to hydrazine and this hydrogen peroxide get reduced into water point number one or this ammonia could be oxidized using sodium oxychloride 
to this chloramine and this chloramine is further reacted by uh, this ammonia molecule to produce this hydrazine. So, actually if you look at this is nitrogen in between N2 H4 means hydrazine then uh, this is ammonia if you check the extent of reduction. So, this molecule is very less reactive that is why first we are going to here then we are going to here. So, unnecessarily means first we are reducing second we are again means this is actually a reduction and this is actually a oxidation. So, huge amount of extra energy needed. So, that is a waste of energy and nowadays whole um, earth is careful about the energy wherever we are capable to save energy we should save. Okay. So, this is, but if this molecule was little more reactive, then we do not need to spend that much energy to achieve this target. Okay. So, in conclusion, uh, as a chemist, we should not consider something as a good or bad, it is their unique property based on our brilliant choice, we need to utilize their chemical property for the beneficial of mankind or better to say mother nature. Okay. So, and remember nothing is hazardous because mother nature have its smart plans, that is why it designed everything in its own way. Okay. So, not only the earth it, and its atmosphere also. So, this is the end of the discussion.